Hey everyone, and welcome back to this Python series. In the previous lesson, we talked about using Python's built-in functions. And for this lesson, we will be writing our own functions. So we'll get started with a few examples. So just a quick review of functions before we get to the first example. Functions are just self-contained blocks of code that are aimed to accomplish a specific task. So some functions can be complicated and some of them can be simple. So I'll go over some simple functions first and then as the video goes on, we'll get into some more complicated ones, well, slightly complicated kind of functions. So let's get to the first example where we'll just write a function that prints out hello twice. So to start off, we'll type in the def keyword, which will just define a new function. So let's call this test function. So here we'll just do the print function that says hello, and we will do that twice. So then we can call this function and it should print out hello um, twice. So we can call the function by typing in test function and then doing the open close parentheses. There are no need for any arguments because we haven't had any arguments being taken. We just wanted to run the block of code inside that function. So let's run it and it should print out hello twice in the interactive shell as it's seen over here. And we can run that function. Let's test by running it three different times and it should say hello six times because one instance of the function will print out hello twice. So if we print it out three times, it should actually print hello six times. So if you run that, it prints out hello six times as I mentioned it would do. And now I wanna do another example where we are going to call this function from a separate function. So let's do another example. I'm going to separate this example with a comment. And then let's do um, function two. And it's, it's generally advised to keep your function name simple. But if you want to make your function name long, you can do that just as long as you are not as long as you don't make any typos. So that's why it's advisable to keep your functions short and simple. But let's go and call the other function from this function. So as you can see over here, we are calling in the other function. And let's go and run that right now. So we're going to run our function too. And it should work as intended. So we are just calling this function indirectly because we're going to be using another function to call that function. So that's one way that you can do um, if you want to call a function from another function, that's also perfectly fine to do. So we're going to comment these two examples out now because we're going to go and create an entirely new function this time. And this function will raise a base to its exponent. So let's do that by typing in def get power. And then this time the function will take in two arguments. So we'll take in first the base and then the exponent. Then here we will do the return statement. And then it will be the base raised to its exponent. So in this case, if we want to do, for example, two, we will raise it to the third power. So let's do that right now by doing print get power. And then we have to pass in the arguments, like I mentioned. So it will be two and then raise to the third power. So essentially, it will be two to the third power or in other words, two times two times two. And that should say eight. So if you run this program, it will say eight because two times two is four, then times two is eight. So that's we're raising that to the third power. And we can do the same thing with, let's do the base as three and let's raise it to the third power as well. So it would be three times three times three and that would be 27. Oops, let me run that right now. And as you can see, it is working exactly as intended. And let's do this with something more complicated. Let's do uh, four raised to the tenth power, so it'll be, it'll be like um four to the tenth, and let's see if that is working. Ooh, that's a big number, but let's see if that is the correct answer, and we can verify this with a calculator. So I'll just, you can do any calculator you want. I'm gonna use Mathway for this. So what we did was get the four to the tenth power. So let's see if the answer is correct. So is that correct? I'm going to put the two numbers side by side. 
and yes, it is correct. It is indeed um a one million and forty eight thousand five hundred seventy six, as we see over here. So let's go and do the next example, and we can actually get rid of this right now. We don't need this anymore. Um, let's go and get to the next example where we are going to be um doing f strings for this and. F strings are just short for formatted string literals, and what they are used to do is to format strings in a more concise manner. So let's do that with this function. So I'm gonna I'm gonna comment this one out over here, and let's do a function called greet, and this will take in one argument, and that's going to be the name, and then we can do print, and then let's do our F string, so it'll be F and then two quotation marks and it will say hello oops hello over here and then and then we will type in the name of the um, argument which is going to be name and then what we can do is we can call this function and yet actually do a curly bracket for this not the um, regular parentheses and then we can do greet and let's pass it a string let's I'm gonna pass it my name and it should say um, hello, or whatever name you put down, just like that. And we can go and do the same thing. Let's do uh, Emily, for example. And it should say the same thing that we just um, typed in. It was hello, Emily. So that is one function that we can do with f strings. So let's do another function, but this time we will take in many different arguments. And this will be one that takes the sum of many different numbers. So we can get rid of this one over here by commenting it out again. And let's call this one um, add underscore numbers. And let's do um, a lot of different uh, arguments. Let's do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this will take in, let's see how many, seven different arguments. That's quite a lot. But we can return that. So since it's saying we want to add them, you will return them as a sum. So A plus B plus C plus D, plus E, plus F, plus G. Oh, don't forget the colon at the end, by the way. So it will return all of those that we pass, and it will return that as a sum. So to do this, let's um, create a new, um, let's create a new variable called result. And then we can call the function, so add numbers. And let's pass in seven different numbers that we want to add. So let's keep this simple. We don't want to add in two complicated numbers. Let's do two, um, four, five, three, uh, five, no, four, one, two. So that is seven different arguments. That Those are seven different arguments and these have seven different numbers. So let's then print the sum is, and let's do result. And let's run the program right now. And you can see that it will say the sum is 21. And let's see if that's true. So 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. Plus 3 is 14. Plus 4 is 18. Plus 1 is 19. And then plus 2 is 21. That is working as intended. And we can go ahead and try out some other numbers. Let's make this one 19. And let's run it again. And now it says it's 39. So let's verify. Let's work backwards this time. So 19 plus 2 is 21. Plus 4 is 25. Plus 3 is 28. Plus 5 is 33. Uh, plus 4 is 37. And plus 2 is 39. So that is, the, that is indeed the sum. And it's working as intended. So that is one example of passing in a lot of different arguments into a function and then returning them into a single sum and you can also do the same thing you can make it subtract or you can make it multiply if you want to it doesn't really matter just as long as you're able to um, not have any syntax errors that should also work so let's get to our last example where we will have a function check if a data type is correct so what I mean by that is that it will return this function will only work if we, let's say, we pass it a string or if we pass it an integer, but if we pass it any other kind of data type, this function will not work. And that might be important if you want to narrow down 
a certain amount of answers that the user will want that you want your user to pass so let's do this this is going to be our last example for the video let's do def and let's call this data type and then this argument will be input one. We don't need to have a lot of different arguments. We just need to have the if statement that will check if we want to pass a certain data type without needing to get anything else. So let's do if not is instance, and this will check um, if the if whatever we record, whatever input one recorded, is not a string. And then it will say to please provide a string argument and you will see that it will work if we type in anything that is not a string over here this is what we'll, what we can do we can we can edit this later to cover any other kind of data type so let's do this if statement will say if you did not type a string in for this argument then it will the function will detect that and it will say please provide a string argument but now we want to go and see what will happen if we did provide a string argument and we'll say return and we'll do another um f string here and it will say you said and then another curly bracket because we're doing the f string and then it will say input one or whatever you called your argument name and that's it for the um block inside so now we can actually run it and test if it works so let's do result which is another variable that we created and let's assign it the um let's check if the data type's argument is indeed a string so let's do hello there and this is indeed a string as you can tell by the quotation marks and if we print out that result it should print out this line over here and it should say you said hello there so that that is our if statement working for the, for this um line of code but let's test and see if we don't print a string so let's do another result and this time the data type will be an integer let's do 45 and this should not work because the data type is no longer a string it should instead say please provide a string argument but what if we were to do the inverse so right now this is an integer and right now this is a string and because it's checking to see if it's a string this one over here will work and this one over here will not work but let's see if we change this data type to an int and then let's go please provide an integer argument it should now have the opposite effect because now the first data type was a string but now our um code wants to check for integer arguments so let's run this program again and now you can see that it indeed it flipped around the first one here which said hello there is no longer valid because it's now checking for an integer and the second result to variable has an integer data type so now it is valid and now it says you said 45. So that's an example of a function that can check if your data type is the valid answer for that. Alright so that is it for writing your own functions and I hope this helped you out so that you can write your own functions in the future where you can manage your programs much easier by just having a function accomplish certain tasks without needing to repeat lines of code and making your programs messier. So stay tuned for the next lesson in the series.